So in the DSA, we have multiple projections. The, there are various uh, uh, projections uh, in the DSA, whereby we will get a 3D orientation of the vasculature, uh, thereby a 3D orientation of the aneurysms. So uh, one is the frontal um, uh, posterior anterior projection. So what we see is the frontal posterior anterior uh, projection that is seen from the front. And then you have an, a lateral projection, a transorbital oblique projection, a reverse transorbital oblique projection, then uh, the cross compression ICA sequences. So these are the four main uh, views which we uh, use in a case of a DSA. So the first one, what we are going to see is the frontal projection or the uh, posterior anterior projection. So this is the uh, frontal projection. So now we will remove the skull and see only the vasculature. So this is the uh, cervical ICA and then the petrous ICA and then the cavernous ICA and then it terminates into the uh, medial uh, ACA and then the MCA. So uh, forget about this part. Uh, I will uh, uh, tell you in this thing. So just for your uh, remembrance, uh, this, this is there. You can take a screenshot for remembering these things. So I will explain this. So uh, this is the uh, horizontal, this is the uh, vertical uh, cervical part and uh, then the vertical petrus and the horizontal petrus and then the cavernous segment. Okay, then uh, this is the ophthalmic artery. This is the ophthalmic artery. And then what we have, this is the um, uh, A1 ACA. This is the A1 ACA. And this is the M1 MCA. This is the M1 MCA. The uh, middle cerebral artery then divides into a superior trunk and an inferior trunk, which we will discuss when we uh, discuss about the uh, middle cerebral artery. So this is the M1 MCA, this is the A1 ACA. So this is the artery, recurrent artery of Hubner, which arises from the A1 ACA, recurrent artery of Hubner, which usually arises uh, distally and then courses um, uh, proximally. So again, in the angiographic picture, this is the cervical ICA and then the petrous uh, ICA and then the horizontal uh, and then the cavernous ICA. And then uh, the uh, ICA bi bifurcation into the uh, anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. This is the A1 ACA. This is the M1 MCA. So this is the arterial phase. This is the arterial phase. And then this is the uh, capillary phase. And then you have the venous phase. So gradually, this is the uh, first you have the frontal projection. So now the skull bone will be removed. You What you will see is only the vessel. And then you have the, the that is the arterial phase. Then you have the venous, uh, the capillary phase. And then you have the venous phase. So in this venous phase, what you see here is the superior sagittal sinus. This is the superior sagittal sinus. This is the torcula herophily. And uh, this is the uh, transverse sinus. This is the transverse sinus. And then the sigmoid sinus ending in the internal jugular vein. So then is the lateral projection. So this is the lateral ICA projection, seeing it from the lateral. So this is a lateral ICA projection where this is the uh, uh, carotid artery. This is the carotid projections. So now we'll remove the skull and see the uh, only the artery now. So this is the lateral projection. This is the ICA and then uh, which bifurcates into the um, ACA and then the MCA. It is the ACA, this is the MCA. So this is the ophthalmic artery. This is the ophthalmic artery. And uh, this is the posterior communicating artery. This is the posterior communicating artery. So these are the main things which we need to uh, see in the uh, lateral projection. So the ICA terminating into the ACA and the MCA, and then the ophthalmic artery, the posterior communicating artery, and the choroidal, just proximal uh, to the, uh, or distal to the uh, PCOM lies the anterior choroidal artery. And this anterior cerebral artery further divides into the callosomarginal and the pericallosal artery. 
The one which lies uh, above, this is the calloso marginal artery, which lies over the cingulate sulcus. Cingulate sulcus is just above the cingulate gyrus. Okay, the calloso marginal artery lies over the cingulate sulcus above the cingulate gyrus. And then this is the pericalosal artery, which uh, sits over the corpus callosum. So this is the pericalosal artery, which sits over the corpus callosum. So once again, so um, uh, this is the ICA, this is the ophthalmic uh, artery. And uh, then th this is what I said, this is the calloso marginal artery, which sits over the cingulate sulcus. This is the pericalosal artery, which sits over the corpus callosum. All the markings. So this is the prominent PCOM. Okay, this is the prominent PCOM. The posterior communicating artery. This is the ophthalmic artery. This is the ophthalmic artery. So the cavernous segment, just like the facial nerve, it also has an anterior genu and the posterior genu. So this is the posterior genu of the cavernous ICA and this is the anterior genu of the cavernous ICA. Okay, here also we use the terminology called anterior genu and the posterior genu. This part is called as the carotid siphon. This is part. This part is called as the carotid siphon. So this is the arterial phase. So after removing the skull, what we are seeing is the arterial phase, then is the capillary phase, and then is the venous phase. So this is the uh, superior sagittal sinus. This is the superior sagittal sinus. This is the torcula, and then you have the transverse sinus, the sigmoid sinus, and the internal jugular vein. So I'll show you further more illustrations. Like uh, this is the superior sagittal sinus. This is the torcula and then the transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus. And here you have the straight sinus. This is called the straight sinus. And then this is the vein of gallon. So the vein of gallon is basically formed by the joining of. So here, what you need to see is the, uh, I took this picture mainly to understand, uh, make you uh, understand what uh, how the vein of gallon is formed. Okay, so vein of gallon is formed by the union of the two internal cerebral vein and the basal vein of Rosenthal. Okay, that is how the vein of gallon is formed. The two internal cerebral vein and the um, basal vein of Rosenthal, the vein of gallon is formed. And then you have the straight sinus. This is the straight sinus. This is a straight sinus. So these are the important uh, tributaries, venous tributaries, which you should uh, remember. So this is the uh, transorbital oblique view. This is the transorbital oblique view. Again, uh, just to give you a 3D orientation to the arterial vasculature. The arterial face and the venous face. So this is the uh, reverse transorbital oblique view. Once again, the uh, detailed uh, once again, a detailed uh, description of each and every vessel based on the various views, we will again discuss in the corresponding uh, 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 webinars, which we will uh, independently handle on each and every vessels. So again, we will discuss on the um, IC aneurysms when we take up on the I am only now demonstrating the DSA pictures to make you orient to the ICA anatomies and the various branches of the ICA. The subsequent sessions, we will uh, in uh, detail study on the individual vessels and, and its angiographic uh, findings uh, and the surgical approaches. Okay, So now I am just trying to give an outline and to make you uh, understand how to read an DSA. So this was something which uh, I had difficulty during my MCH days to uh, orient towards DSA. So that is most important. So first we should orient towards the uh, angiographic picture and then gradually we can build upon it. So this is the uh, crossed um, uh, compression ICA. So what do you mean uh, by this? So what here you can see an aneurysm. So this is the aneurysm. Okay, so this is the ICA. This is the ICA and here is the bifurcation of this is a normal uh, ICA. And this is the bifurcation into the uh, medial A1 ACA and the lateral M1 MCA. 
And here, what is being done is here, the uh, ICA is being compressed. That is called as the uh, cross compression ICA. So the, here, the ICA has been compressed to see whether there is a contralateral uh, filling, to see whether there is a filling from the contralateral ICA. So here is the aneurysm. So this is an ICA bifurcation aneurysm. Okay, this is an ICA bifurcation aneurysm located at uh, the ICA bifurcation. So you don't see the ICA here because it is compressed. It can be either compressed or uh, usually it is done with the balloon occlusion. It's also called as the balloon occlusion test to see the filling from the contralateral side. So this is usually done when we are planning for any bypass procedures. So now you can clearly see that this ICA is being compressed. So this is the vertebral artery projection. So the uh, vertebral artery projections, uh, uh, we shall discuss in the posterior circulation uh, thing. So just I will mention, so this is the vertebral artery and uh, uh, this is the basilar artery. The basilar artery terminates with uh, the superior, this is a superior cerebellar artery and then the posterior cerebral artery. That is the termination of the basilar artery. So this is the uh, uh, P1 PCA and then this is the superior cerebellar artery. So details of it we'll again discuss in the um, posterior circulation aneurysms. This is the capillary phase and then this is the venous phase. So a special mention on the coral artery because it's quite difficult to um, uh, see the uh, anterior coral artery. You need to spend some more time in uh, locating this uh, anterior coral artery. So this is the anterior choroidal artery, which has two segments. That is the cisternal segment and then is the plexal segment. So this is the anterior choroidal artery. So in a nutshell, so this is the cavernous ICA. So just this, I took this picture only to make you understand uh, the uh, tributaries uh, at the, of the cavernous ICA. So there are mainly the two tributaries. This is the cavernous ICA. This is the meningo hypophyseal trunk. And this is the, inf uh, this is the infrolateral trunk. This is the infrolateral trunk. This is the ophthalmic artery. This is the ophthalmic artery. So what you see here is, this is the um, ophthalmic artery. This is the ophthalmic artery. So here you see a prominent posterior communicating artery. This is a prominent posterior communicating artery. This is the prominent, usually it will be very, very thin. Here, this is a very prominent posterior communicating artery. And uh, this is just uh, distal to it is the uh, anterior choroidal artery. So this is the anterior choroidal artery. Once again, I repeat, this is the ophthalmic artery, this is the posterior communicating artery, and this is the anterior choroidal artery. 